to that knee. How is he progressing looking forward to Sunday? He'll be out. Peter will be out. And uh, Molden will be out and Gifford will be out. So if you want to tweet all that out there real quick, I'll let you do that. And then we can move on. Is that a re-aggravation with Trey on the injury? No, just uh, – no, not, not, not a re-aggravation. Just um, – not going to be able to be out there for maybe a week or so, and we'll see how that progresses. But um, when able to do anything this week, we'll see where he's at next week. As, uh, you, you talked about Dylan kind of coming back and, and doing well after being mm-hmm. out for so long. Has he seemed to get better and more comfortable the more he has played? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think he has. And, again, it's not perfect. And, you know, Dylan's strength is that he's smart. He understands what to do. He kind of – if he can stay square and – Keep his pad level down. Uh, you know, stay inside out. You know he can, he can do, do a good job in pass protection. Um, but yeah, I mean he, you know he's he's working. And again, we, you know, we 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 lost last week. So anybody's effort, offense, defense, special teams, coaching wasn't good enough. So, but it's been good to have him in there, and he's been you know really progressing well from you know the surgeries. Worked, worked really hard to get back. With Burks being out, how much of an opportunity, how big is that for Chris Moore to step up? And- Chris Moore's made plays every time we throw him the ball. So, you know, I mean, and Traylon had some drops when he was in there. And, you know, so Chris will get ops. Nick's, when we throw Nick Westbrook the ball, he's caught it. So they'll all get opportunities. How are the challenges of getting – getting the short passing game going when it seems like it, it would be a, a solution to part of what you have in terms of pass pressure, but it, it, it's not something that's been easy. Obviously. Well, you have, you know, again, looking at, you know, we're, we're basing this off of, you know, the last week and you know, so when they're up on you, right, the quick passing game, that quick game, I thought we tried to allude to it the other day. Is it's not something you know? I mean, we'll have to use our our man beaters or, or be able to, to, to throw the ball um, over top of them. It's just the, the quick games. It's just the windows and the contested catches. You don't have a lot of opportunity to create separation. Still, something that we we have to be able to do. Um, and, and you you know trying to create that in, in, in a play pass, you know, where you're getting rid of some of those bodies. Back there and trying to trying to get them up closer to the line of scrimmage. With guys like Chestnut Brown on IR and Gifford out. How much does that force you to kind of juggle on special teams? Everybody prepares as a starter each and every week. Um, so excited to see some some different guys in there, and you know, disappointed for uh, Mike Brown. You know, just looking at how hard he worked in the off season to want to be the, the personal protector uh, who has a large responsibility of making calls and. You know, so we'll see uh, when his availability is after four games. Um, you know, and then it's just another opportunity for, for somebody else to step in there. How's Gibson looked uh, for you guys just in, in practice and so forth? Yeah, you get good. a good impression of him? Yeah, you know what I mean? We just you know, go into some games and, and looking at special teams and looking at the depth at that position. And, but he's been had a great attitude. He's worked hard and you know, he's ready to go. How's Kyle Phillips progressing? Oh, good. I anticipate him being out here next week. With how quickly Burrow has a tendency of getting rid of the ball, Arden mentioned batted balls, getting their hands up, important. Is that just a matter of getting their hands in the air? Or is there something you can do with, like, rush lanes to try and make it more difficult on Burrow? Well, it's obviously not running by him. You know what I mean? You can't you can't bat a ball when you're running behind him in the pocket. Uh, but a lot of it is a timing and understanding of when he's ready to throw. Uh, you know, the quarterback, the, the front hand, you know, trying to have an awareness of where his arm angle is or where he's looking. Is he looking to the right? Is he looking to the left? I think uh, I think last year you talked about Peyton Miller, maybe it's your, your niece. And, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet little Peyton, doing. yeah, for the cancer awareness. She's doing great. She's doing fantastic. And, and again, she was in good hands at, uh, at the University of Iowa, um, you know, uh, children's Hospital, and she, you know, she's one of those girls. I did the little wave thing, and uh, so that was cool. Um, but Peyton is doing great, and uh, excited to be able to to honor her and recognize her in a crucial catch. A guy like, like, Thanks for asking, Jim. Yeah, you got it. A guy like D Hop is, is tough. I know he's dealing with the ankle injury. It's one of those things you have to decide whether 
more risk would be beneficial in the long term, or you know, having them out there at maybe less than 100%. Is, who, who, you know, I mean, we've been through this. It's professional football. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to, you know, you guys do all these polls and who's the best this and who's the best that. Who's who's 100% four weeks in? I'd like to see that poll because uh, it's just not realistic. I and mean, the whole idea of this game is that you have to operate at less than 100%. I mean, very, very rarely is you know, if we waited for everybody to be 100 percent, we'd have a, a small roster. So with that, it's about professionalism. It's about getting the reps that he needs during the week, the timing reps with the quarterback. What can we get done in a jog through? What can we get done in a walk through? Uh, it works very hard to, to treat and to stay on top of things. So um, satisfied with, with where he is and how he's prepared. How's the week been for Andre Dillon as far as preparation and just men mental approach and everything? Good. You know what I mean? It's what it's got to be. You know what I mean? Like, gave up a couple plays, you know what I mean, to a, probably one of the best edge defenders in this league. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, that's – I think he's come back to work and continue to, to work and develop and that's what you got to do. When you have a guy like struggle like that, do you do anything different to try to bring him along, or like in this case, you just look at it like, hey, that was Miles Garrett. It, it, it was, you know what I mean. And it, you know, I mean, sometimes we were able to block him, uh, sometimes we we weren't, and um, you get back to work. You figure out who you got to go against and what the game plan is, and you know, try to keep earning confidence one little detail at a time uh, as the week goes on. You able to call uh, Dane up and plug him in to, to do things right away? Able to? Familiar? Yes, we are able to. Will we? I'm not sure. But yeah. No. If called on, he would be expected. Everybody that's here is expected to to, to be ready to execute the role that, that we would have for him. It's practice the way we did today, uh, and, and the results to show. What about the Bengals? What's the challenge there against their defense? Uh, you saw what those guys did, uh, you know, not too long ago. Uh, they get after it. They play hardball. Uh, they got good secondary, good D line. Uh, you know, I don't study the offense too much, but uh, I, know, I know they got Jamar Chase and T Higgins over there. So, uh, you know, they got playmakers everywhere on the field. How about you try to be a calming force, maybe the guys who maybe pressing and things haven't gone well early to try to settle guys down and, and lift some spirits? Uh, you got to go out and uh, you know try to try to let your play. You know, show and uh, hopefully everybody else kind of matches that for me. You know, go out and do what I can when my number's called. That's blocking or, or catching the ball. So, uh, and I play a lot of ball and had some not so good years. And you got to stay level headed. It's a long season. How do you how do you teach yourself to do that? You talked about playing ball for a long time. Were you always level headed, or was it something that kind of came gradually? Uh, it came gradually. I, I wasn't. You know, um, coming from Clemson, we won a lot of games, and you know, my first year in the NFL, I went two and fourteen. Uh, but having somebody like Andre Johnson, who's uh, you know was kind of like my mentor there, and Arian Foster, those guys taught me how to kind of you know control what I can control. Is that something you try and impart on some of the younger guys here? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, you gotta you gotta go you know about your daily routine. However, no matter what the results is, um, you know, obviously you know if you feel like you gotta do something to, to make you know yourself better to help the team, you gotta do that. But uh, you can't you know. Just, uh, you know, think everything is on you when it's a team sport. Those conversations go all the way through the roster? Are you talking about offensive linemen? Uh, I talk to everybody, you know, try my best to.